Corruption, greed, arrogance. These hallmarks of the Trudeau regime were on full display once again when a bombshell report exposed the true extent of the gas and oil emissions cap policy. Billions in revenue and thousands of jobs being lost is just the tip of the corrupt climate iceberg Trudeau has Canada clashing with. But now Danielle Smith has fired herself up again to stand one-on-one -on -one against Trudeau and his abhorrent climate schemes, lambasting the liberal establishment and everyone in it for the crooked individuals they are after they play with people's lives in hopes of scoring cheap, woke points. Danielle Smith's epic rant displays the resolve a lot of conservatives still have to fight the good fight in hopes of bettering the future for every Canadian. The only hurdle to that future is the man in power, and the people are clearly fed up with him. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Before we jump into today's video, take a second to sign up for our exclusive uncensored newsletter. The mainstream media won't report Trudeau's scandals and corruption, but our newsletter delivers the raw truth to your inbox daily. We'll leave you the link in the description box. Now let's dive into today's crazy developments. Corruption, lies, and countless sham taxes utilizing woke ideologies seem to be a given matter under the leadership of a liberal regime. And with Trudeau, we get all of these cornerstones multiplied by tenfold when he talks about his corrupt climate policies. And the biggest and clearest example of the abysmal approach Trudeau and the liberals take with climate and how Canadians should tackle it can never be anything other than the costly carbon tax. We talk about the carbon tax a lot and we might still touch upon it here today, but given that Trudeau and climate policies are a mixture that never disappoints in terms of insane and unhinged liberal woke takes and demands, something else was bound to spring up from that rotten tree. Enter the oil and gas emissions cap, a policy so ambitiously devoid of any basis or foundation that it honestly borders on parity. In short, the Canada oil and gas emissions cap has been a key climate policy for Trudeau and the liberals and its function is basically in the name. Trudeau and his crooked liberals will do everything they can to cap gas and oil emissions to an arbitrary point cooked up by leftists. This can, and absolutely will, lead to Trudeau exercising his undeserved power as a dictator forcing policies that he and the liberals deem good enough to aid Canada reach that impossible target. Cutting down important infrastructures, imposing rules and regulations that hinder the economy, and enacting costly taxes like the infamous carbon tax. So if that doesn't sound all that well, and it is supposedly the strict policy that is feeding into other abysmal liberal climate initiatives, why are we still supporting such a travesty again? The truth is that no one is supporting it, and in fact some people are going to bat just to fight this disaster of policy hiding under the guise of protecting the environment and doing what's best for Canada. Danielle Smith being one of the staunch fighters against the corrupt Trudeau cap, especially after a bombshell report revealed the true extent the liberals are willing to go to, just to prove their silly little schemes right. Danielle Smith has been a very vocal opposition to Trudeau and the carbon tax scheme, going as far as rallying up other disgruntled premiers to publicly unite and express their disdain to Trudeau in hopes of axing the corrupt tax. Trudeau obviously brushed it off as child's play and the liberals stonewalled any further discussion. So it is no wonder that she was enraged about the oil and gas emission cap and the subsequent report that exposed the Trudeau scheme costing Canada upwards of $247 billion in revenue alongside killing tens of thousands of jobs in the process. And if your ears are failing you or you are shocked into not believing what I just said, let me say it once again in more detail. A new report from SNP Global, commissioned by the Canadian Association of Petroleum Producers, shows that restricting emissions from conventional oil and gas production by 40% by 2030, as Trudeau intends, would cut $247 billion or more in capital investment over the next nine years compared to current policy. Never mind the fact that this drastic change will affect the livelihoods of up to 51,000 individuals, as well as the fact that adequately paying jobs will disappear from the market entirely and without a shred of remorse from the Liberals. Danielle Smith was as shocked as anyone at this report and decided to take the fight into her own hands as she calls out and lambasts Trudeau, humiliating him publicly and demanding that he cut all this bullshit climate policy that is going to affect Canadians' lives negatively. Smith declared the Trudeau government as an out-of-touch liberal establishment that was willing to sacrifice the lives and livelihoods of everyday hard-working Canadians just to score cheap political points with an initiative that is wasteful and not going to work as intended. It has been a while since we have seen Danielle Smith this fired up, but she is 100% in the right here, especially since Albertans are among the countless people that will suffer the burn of production cuts. Her message was clear and concise. It is time to put a cap on Trudeau and his wacko climate policies, not a cap on emissions that are posing no issues for Canadians and will continue to pose no issues for years to come. But do you honestly think that Trudeau is going to stop what he is doing even with all the fighting that Danielle Smith and the Conservatives are doing? Obviously not. 
This is a liberal agenda that they are desperately trying to push at the behest of everyone and everything. It doesn't matter how threatening and unhinged you may sound, it never stopped Trudeau from snarkily throwing shade and threatening Scott Moe with federal action because he dared oppose the carbon tax in his Saskatchewan province. Um, you were here in January of last year at Vital Metals, and uh, back again this year. Last year, you did not have a chance to meet with uh, Premier Scott Moe, and this year, there's no plan to meet with him again. Um, I know he's been wanting to meet with you to speak about the carbon tax. So why no meeting this time around? Um, we, as we always do, we let the Premier's office know uh, I was coming to town and, uh, uh, and, uh, and they said, uh, that's good, uh, we don't need a meeting right now, or they, they, weren't, uh, they weren't able to organize a meeting right now. That's fine. I'm always happy to talk about the fact that we're putting a price on pollution right across the country that puts more money back in the pockets uh, of families in Saskatchewan. Uh, eight out of 10 families across the country in regions where we've put in the price on pollution actually do better off with the price on pollution because we price pollution and then we send the Canada carbon rebate checks uh, to families across those jurisdictions and low income and middle income families almost entirely do better off. It's $1,800 uh, this year for families in Saskatchewan, a family of four in Saskatchewan, which is more than the cost of the price on pollution that we've put in. So this is a way of both fighting climate change, fighting the droughts uh, and forest fires that are more and more regular because of extreme weather events linked to climate change, but also putting more money in families' pockets with a check that just last arrived on October 15th, uh, sorry, April 15th uh, last week that is helping families with the costs of everything from food or fuel to rent, whatever it is uh, that they're spending on, that money shows up from the federal government. And I will add, despite the disagreement I have with the uh, provincial government here in Saskatchewan on them not wanting to uh, pay uh, the federal government what is owed, the Canada carbon rebate checks going to families in Saskatchewan will not be impacted by uh, the government of Saskatchewan's decision. We're going to continue to deliver the Canada carbon rebate to families right across Saskatchewan, despite the fact that Premier Mo uh, is not sending that money to Ottawa right now. Um, Canada Revenue Agency has uh, ways of ensuring that uh, that, that uh, money that is owed to them uh, is, is eventually collected, uh, and we have faith in the uh, rigorous uh, you know, quasi-judicial proceedings that the Canada Reg uh, Revenue Agency uses. Uh, and in turn, it could affect recruitment and retention of uh, physicians. Are you willing to make changes or exceptions for doctors? Um, someone... Um, making capital gains has to make more than $250,000 in capital gain profits to start to see uh, the new changes of inclusion from 50% of capital gains to two-thirds of capital claims being included in their tax rates. We just don't think it's right that a student or an electrician or a teacher be paying taxes on 100% of their income while others have the opportunities uh, to uh, use uh, accountants and pay taxes on only 50% of that income. This is about fairness. This is about the fact that in order for people to succeed across this economy at all generations, we need young people to succeed. We need young people to be able to buy homes in the coming years. We need young people to be confident of the future that's gonna have opportunities for them to build a family and build a future the way they want to. So yes, we are asking the most successful in this country to do a little bit more to make sure that everyone can see themselves in the success of this country. And that's something that it bewilders me a little bit that the Conservative Party is standing against. It was very clear over the weekend uh, that they are not in favor of asking the wealthiest to pay a little bit more to create success for young people. I think that's wrong. Because the one thing that matters most to all Canadians, regardless of where you live in, regardless of what your background is, regardless of your approach or your, your, your abilities in life, people expect this country to be fair. 
Doesn't matter how facts and evidence are not in your favor, you can just be like Trudeau and deflect criticism while twisting an innocent interaction trying to paint the conservative opposition in a bad light. Uh, your opponent was photographed posing with anti-carbon tax protesters flying F. Trudeau flags. In, that, in the video, Pierre Polyev is heard saying that you are a liar and everything you say is, quote, bullshit. Can, you, can we get your response, please? Every politician has to make choices about what kind of leader they want to be. Are they a the kind of leader that is going to exacerbate divisions, fears, and polarization in our country, make personal attacks, and welcome the support of conspiracy theorists uh, and extremists? Because that's exactly what Pierre Polyev continues to do, not just when he, you see him engaging with members of Diagalon, but also, when he refuses to condemn and reject the endorsement of Alex Jones. Alex Jones is a proven liar and conspiracy theorist who you know, had to pay, has to pay millions, hundreds of millions of dollars because he lied about the Sandy Hook killing that killed 20 little kids. This is the kind of man who's saying Pierre Polyev has the right ideas uh, to bring the country towards the right, towards conspiracy theories, towards extremism, towards polarization, towards the kind of lies that Alex Jones is peddling still. So the fact that Pierre Polyev hasn't stood up to condemn that endorsement, the fact that he continues to encourage the kind of divisive approaches to Canada that uh, I don't think Canadians want to see, really shows that he will do anything to win, anything to torque up negativity and fear. And it only emphasizes that he has nothing to say to actually solve the problems that he's busy amplifying. Under the leadership of Trudeau, Nothing truly matters unless it plays perfectly into the liberal agenda. And that's exactly why Canadians will unfortunately continue to suffer endlessly until some common sense takes the charge from the goons running the country into the ground. Well, that's all for now. What do you think of Daniel Smith lambasting Trudeau over the emissions cap? What is your opinion on the report itself? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also follow us on Twitter, where we post stuff we can't post on YouTube. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I will see you in the next one.